Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. <coughs> my name is Muhammad Assaf. This is my last module here at Biud. My topic or the thesis, uh, the topic of my thesis is about the perspectives of public schools, grade 12 Emirati students, on writing challenges in English language. What are the types of challenges that students face in writing in English in the UAE? And it is only the sample is about the population grade 12 Emirati students. Now, why I chose this topic? What is the problem? Uh, we have here in the UAE for admission to public universities in the UAE, which are three universities we have, that students have to pass the SIBA. The SIBA exam, this is for common English proficiency assessment. The students have to score above 150 out of 210 in order to guarantee an entry to or admission to one of the public universities. Now, from the, this is a report by the Ministry of Higher Education, and as you can see here, this is the over a average of writing. Writing is out of six. The band is out of six. So in 2014, around 18,000 students, Emirati, grade 12 Emirati students, of course, in public and also in private schools. Uh, private schools, we, mean, we don't mean British or uh, American curriculum, only the Ministry of Education curriculum. The score here, for the overall, was 3.2 out of 6. For females, 3.5, and for male, only 2.7. So this is a real issue. So this is a challenge for the UAE, Ministry of Education and universities. So this is the main source or the main problem that motivated me to talk about this one because this is really, there is a need to tackle this issue in order to help in finding a solution or a plan or a roadmap in order to help in dealing with this uh, issue. Now, also another, another uh, fact or it is not still a fact because I have now administered around 3,000 questionnaires in six different Emirates in the UAE, excluding Abu Dhabi because in Abu Dhabi the approach is completely different. And especially one of the variable is, is the uh, type of teachers. Teachers in Abu Dhabi, most of them who teach English are native speakers. So as you can notice from here, this is a question for the students that about writing. Is writing difficult for you or not? So as you can see that around 74, 44, 25, they agree with this, that writing is difficult for them. So speaking or reading, I didn't ask about this, but writing for students is also a, a problem for many students, around 74. And if we, uh, we want to include that, those who are not sure, it means around 75% of the total. The sample for my question for the, my study is around 1,500 students, which accounts for 22% uh, of the total population. There are this year, 2014, 2015, around uh, 7,250 students, grade 12 Emirati, in public schools. So around 7,000. So the total, so my sample is around. So 74, 75% of the students, uh, they said that they agree with this statement that writing is difficult for them. So this is another reason for tackling this issue. And when I asked them this question, and here just uh, the number now, 10 now, that I analyze using SPSS, although I am from art uh, background, uh, but I insisted on using this. It was a challenge fee for me, but I said that I will uh, do this, and now I can do a lot of operations and things using the SPSS. It is a piece of cake, really. After some time, when you practice more, it will be a piece of cake. So the same thing here. I don't have problems in writing English. Around 83% uh, percent of, they said, they disagree with this one. So it means that they have also writing for our students is also an, an issue for them. 
I don't, to like, uh, don't like to write in English, also 81. Mm. And this is here something that we have, we need to ask students why. When the question was, I like learning English, do you like learning English? Look now, how many one agrees? 67% of the total population or of the 800 only, they said, yes, we like learning English. But they don't like to write in English and the writing is difficult for them. So these things, these reasons, uh, or attitudes or opinions of students also encourage me to tackle this issue. Now, uh, why the rationale behind the whole issue that uh, the SIPA, the SIPA results is a real challenge for universities and schools. Now, when they come to schools and they want to accredit school, they ask for the results of the SIPA. So if the SEPA results is below average, then they say, what are you doing for your students? You are not doing anything because this is the only measurement, the only measurement, authentic measurement, assessment tool in the UAE to check the level or to assess the level of student is the SEPA. And this is why I didn't include the expatriates in the study because there is no, because they don't need to take the SEPA or they are not allowed to do it. Only local students have to do the SIBA in order to go to public schools. So now if they, now according to the statistics, and every year the same, uh, around 90, 90 to 95 percent of the total graduates, grade 12, they need what to, uh, they need remedial, remedial classes, uh, remedial courses, the orientation. Because though, those who fail to get 180, 180 out of 210, they have to go where for remedial classes. So the passing score is 150. 150, yes, you can be admitted, but you need 180 at least to, in order not to take any remedial courses. So 90% of the budget of universities is spent where? On what? On the foundation courses. So this is also a real challenge for the Minister of Higher Education and the universities. So they can use the money instead of using it on remedial courses, they can use it on developing other things. So as a result of this, that students who uh, fail to score 180, they try to get to uh, pass the IELTS, to get at least 5.5 in some universities, other universities, six. Also, this is, means that a lot of money is spent on getting the IELTS, and this is, causes a lot of stress for parents and for students. Many UA students uh, leave the university after one or two years because they don't get the IELTS or the score, which is the 180. And the second, the second main rationale behind this study that uh, my study is different from other studies that looked at this uh, issue that they go and ask teachers. They go to universities, what do you think of the challenges that face your students? So they are done in uh, universities, university level, and from the point of view of stu uh, teachers rather than students. In my study, my focus is on what? That I have to go from bottom up, not top to bottom. Uh, so I will go and ask students, what do you think? What are the challenges? Because those are the, those that are the people who suffer from this issue or, or the impact of not being able to write well in English. So acute shortage in studies only, I have been searching, surveying Google and journals and other things about challenges in writing, writing difficulties, problems, all these words. Just I found one study that was uh, conducted in Pakistan in 2012. And the difference also between my study and their study that they looked at the just uh, language, linguistic problems that whether they have spelling, grammar, and other issues. In my case, I want to look at other things that might impact or the challenge students in. So students' perspectives and also personal interests. I'm interested in writing. The, my master's degree was on writing and infusing thinking skills, so this is, I want to see something different. Now, 
my ultimate goal, ultimate goal after finishing all uh, uh, these uh, things, conducting this study and analyzing, doing all these things, I by the end I want to have a road map to come up with or build a model or a road map. Here are three things, the three main components. The first one, what are the challenges? All possible challenges from students' mouth and also from teachers, from literature review, from my experience. So all these challenges, not only grammar, because whenever you ask a teacher of English, uh, what are the challenges or why can't you students write, he, he will mention most of the time lack of vocabulary, grammar, and not interested or motivation or spinning. But in fact, writing is more than this. There are many things uh, in order to be able to write. There are many, uh, the components of writing or good writing includes many factors. So we want to find all these challenges. Then what are the conditions? What should be done? What should be done? And here we talk about the ministry, ministry of education, universities, parents, students, teachers, what are the conditions? So in order to improve the academic achievements of students in this part. So this is, hmm. now my theoretical framework, uh, there are three frameworks or models. The first one by Carroll's. This is a well-known uh, model for school learning, for school learning. It was initially started in 1963 and was modified. The idea here, he talks about uh, timing, timing, how to use time, management of time, PD, all these things, and also maybe the first time that they talk about motivation in a quantitatively way. The second one, Splosky, Splosky models of learning in general, and he identified 74, 74 conditions in order to make learning happen in schools. It is not necessary to meet all these things because from one context to another context, they are different. So, but at least these are 74. Of course, this is uh, the, uh, he read or he uh, consulted many theories in writing and education in teaching languages. Then he come up with 70. Then, uh, next, the third one, Grape. Grape also, he talked about a conditions direction approach rather than a theory. He made use of the 74 conditions. He, this is the model of Splosky hmm, and Grape. He identified or he poured nine conditions from Splosky and added his own because Splosky to some extent ignored the cultural variability or the importance of culture. So he added his three own, uh, number nine, 10, and 12. So these are the main theoretical frameworks that I will uh, make use of. The literature review uh, the liter that I conducted I try to answer four main questions, or three main questions. The first one regarding the guiding theories in writing, in writing, in teaching L2. And of course, there are three or four. Then what are the challenges that face L2? And here I try to look at all possible challenges that people talk about it, universities, schools, colleges, uh, but uh, unfortunately, most of them, the focus is on university and from teachers. And the third thing, what are the findings of the local? I said it all. Uh, to some extent, I tried to find, to search for all the local here in the UAE regarding writing, anything about writing, anything about writing, and international, local, Arab, and I uh, classify this according to the region and with our students or teachers, a primary, elementary, secondary, university. And secondary, just few. You can them, count them on your fingers. Just, uh, but university, the most, yes, the majority. Uh, primary and elementary is teachers, yes, the, more, the majority of studies. But regarding secondary and students, just few, few. Hmm. Now, I have four main research questions. The first one, what are the grade 12 Emirati students' perspectives on the challenges they face? 
in writing in English. And the second one, how do grade 12 students overcome or deal with these challenges? And the third one, what do English instructors? Because this is, I don't want uh, to be criticized for ignoring teachers. So teachers are very important, but because we know about their views. So now in this case, uh, I will ask instructors, supervisor about students' views, students' views. And finally, informed by students and teachers and previous writing, uh, what are the components of writing? This is my ultimate goal, a roadmap for teachers, for the Ministry of Education. If we can apply this later on, uh, uh, will this improve writing for grade 12 students? Uh, of course, this, this study is a mixed method because as we talked that, uh, yes, you can collect uh, quantitative data, but if you want to explain, for example, in the questionnaire, one of the question, I like learning English, I don't like to, uh, to write in English. So now, why don't they like to write in English? I need to talk to students and teachers and to do some uh, content analysis of students' work in order to get more uh, deeply into the answers of the students. Otherwise, it will be vague. I can't support or uh, discuss or defend. So just 74, what does this mean? Yes, it is good that we need the uh, uh, quantity, but why? This is that why we need to go for mixed method. And the research approach, uh, since we are talking about 17 to 19 years old, so I thought that of starting quantitatively first, collect the data, because now if I go directly from the first, if it is uh, explanatory, uh, this is explanatory, not exploratory, because if I go to students as what are the challenges, it is possible that students will mention just one or two or three. But if I provide them with other possible challenges, so students will become aware of this, they, they will think, uh, whether they face these challenges or not. So I started with, quant and it is explanatory, sequential model, quantitatively, then using, uh, after analyzing the questionnaires, the results, I will go and interview students, and after that, I will look at their writings, and after that, after uh, finishing everything, analyzing everything, I will go to teachers and instructor, and this is the findings of my study. What do you think? Uh, and this summarizes the whole issue here, the number of questions, what is the research tool, the approach, and then the rationale behind each one, then the analysis tool that I'm going to implement. Uh, methodology, the first thing, this is what I did now. I, uh, after getting the approval from the university and from the Minister of Education, I met around uh, 24 to 26 students from three different schools and started talking with them about the questionnaire itself because I want to build the questionnaire. It is self-administered one. I, re I used a number of questionnaires, but you know that their scope is different, their content is different, but they are talking about writing. So I talked to students about the challenges. So from their point of view, opinions, I added to the questionnaire from there. So this is the first thing. Then the second phase, which I also done, alhamdulillah, that I uh, distributed around 3,000 questionnaires, uh, returned back around uh, 2,200, uh, rejected around 300. Uh, so I got around 1,900, uh, uh, but I need 1,500. The third one that after that, analyzing the questionnaire, and I will have some, uh, for example, you like learning English, but you don't like to write English, why? So I will go and interview students, also from different levels. For the sample, the sample, yes? Ah, okay, okay. Mm. Ah. So the, okay, then the data analysis, the comparison, all these things, later then focus group with teachers and from different, from different MRS, and the sample includes different levels of students those who are A, B, C, D, so four, di five different levels. Now, for, I piloted the questionnaire. I have 79 uh, items in my questionnaire, and 
the first time that when I piloted the reliability statistics was 0.74, which is good, very good. And I didn't need to delete any items, without deleting any items. And now here, this is uh, after analyzing 838 students, also the statistics here from Bax Alpha is 8.5, and which is very good. It is accepted, about seven is accepted. The questionnaire, this is the result of the questionnaire, some of the findings. So, I don't like to write in English, 54% of the students. Writing is the most 70, and I don't have problems, this is 60, because this is 800 only out of 1,500, so more. The total number of students will be 7,500. Uh, this is a sample of writing from students, also I collect about 150 uh, pieces of writing uh, representing five different levels of proficiency and of course some of them are you know, uh, just uh, average, below average mm -hmm. so also this will give me more ideas so this is why I need some qualitative uh, data in order to support my argument this look another one which means that it is not the black the picture is not completely black there are some students who are bright and they are deliberate that they can score seven and i remember last week one of my students in my school got seven in the arts but this is really not for some of you of you now the limitations on which i want to share with you this one uh, that the age of the participants 17 to 19 some of them are 20 some but the majority of students are 18. So do you think that we can rely on their responses or not? These are students. So this is the question. And this is which Dr. John and Dr. Sophia always keep uh, raising this question. Make sure this risky thing that you are doing. But from the questionnaire, uh, I find that students were very careful in answering the question. More than I tried this with some teachers, and unfortunately, I found that students were more careful about writing the answers. And when they don't know, uh, for example, one of the questions, do you think that we can overcome the problems of writing by cooperation among teachers of Arabic and English? Most of students said no. I asked three students, why did you say not sure? They said, teacher, this is, we need a study, we need a field study, we have to go and research this. We can't say, uh, we learned that we shouldn't say or issue a decision without this. Yes. Uh, okay, yeah. uh, significance, and this is uh, writing, writing, yes. The book is like, this is why I keep, as a teacher development specialist, I keep telling, the teachers who work with me that writing a book is like giving birth. So don't expect that students will do it easily. We have to support them. Thank you very much. Thank you.